What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Recently, I just added a new toy to my bass boat, the Garmin Live Scope. You may have seen me talking about this on my social media, and I'm really excited to finally show you some on the water footage of me trying to catch fish with this new unit. So let's get into it. Before we get in the video, I want to let you know that this video is not sponsored in any way by Garmin. I'm not being paid to review this product or say anything to you guys. I'm actually working with the Bass Tank over in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they actually are going to be putting on different brands of units on my boat so I can review them and test them out for you guys. These reviews are going to be completely unbiased. I'm just going to tell you what I think of them, what's good, what's bad, all of that. And that's the great thing about working with a third party like the Bass Tank. So just wanted to make that clear before we jump into it. A quick side note, I'm not going to be going over the settings that I'm using on this Garmin unit in this video. I've only had it on the lake like three times. I don't feel like I've dialed in the settings quite yet, but there is a great video by the Bass Tank that worked in collaboration with Wired to Fish that goes over the 10 basic settings you need to set for your live scope. That's the video I watched, so check that video out if you want to understand at least the basic settings, and then I'll be making a more detailed interpretation and settings video in the near future. Now, in terms of my live scope setup, I went with a GPS Maps 1022 XSV live scope unit. I installed it up by the trolling motor of my boat and then put the transducer on the shaft of my trolling motor. This means that whenever I turn the head of my trolling motor, that beam is going to move and I'll be able to scan out in front of me to see where the fish are. The reason I went with this unit is because it is the least expensive unit that still allows you to actually record the screen. This is really important for my videos, obviously, because I need to be able to record what's going on under the water and show you what's happening on the screen. Unfortunately, that means that this unit comes in a little bit higher price point, but there are some less expensive units. There's like a 93 SV, I think is a, one of the Garmin units that is a nine inch screen as opposed to a 10 inch, comes in at a lower price point. And that's the one I would have gone with if I could rec record the screen on that one. I just can't, so that's why I went with this one. In terms of my expectations for this live scope unit, I kind of had a feeling that I was gonna go out there, be able to scan over a spot with the live scope, see the fish down there, cast my bait to them, watch them eat it, and reel them in. It seemed really simple when you watch the marketing material and hear guys on the tour talk about it. And while this is the case sometimes, I definitely found that it was a lot more difficult and a lot takes a lot more skill than that to actually get the full capabilities of this live scope unit. What I basically did is I went to a lake that I knew was loaded with fish offshore. I was catching a lot of fish on a drop shot, a Nico rig, football jig, all kinds of stuff on these ledges and there's these big schools of fish. This is great because I could see the fish on the live scope very easily and I basically started out by graphing areas with my down imaging, side imaging, and 2D sonar, locating the fish, then spinning back around and then scanning them with this Garmin live scope. Once I saw them, I started out by throwing a drop shot on the fish, trying to cast it out, let it sink down the bottom, and walk Watch my drop shot fall to those fish. I was successful at actually seeing my drop shot fall down the fish. I was successful at seeing the fish, but I wasn't that great at getting the drop shot and the fish in the same image. When you're using this live scope, one thing that's a little bit of a challenge is that even though you can control the direction the live scope transducer is pointing by changing your trolling motor position, the boat is gonna be drifting with the wind, also it's gonna be turning to the side, which means that it's very difficult to constantly track that bait. One thing about this live scope I found is that the further your bait gets away from the boat as well, the harder it is to catch the bait because the cone angle gets wider and it just kind of doesn't capture things as clearly. This means that to to see the fish, to see your bait all in one image, you really need to be pretty close to the spot. In general, I was setting my forward range on the live scope to about 50 feet. Now, I tried to pitch my bait about 30 feet away from the boat, and the fish would be about 20 feet away from the boat, which is not very far. This means that to really maximize the capability with this unit, you have to be pretty close to the fish, and in my opinion, that means you have to be in somewhat deep water, especially if you want to see your bait and see the fish. Now, I was able to again, see the fish, see my bait, but even though I could do this, I didn't catch a fish for like the first two and a half hours, which is pretty crazy considering I could see him, I had the bait, I had the live scope. Now this might sound a little bit silly, but basically I was just getting tunnel vision on the water. I was completely ignoring other environmental signs. I wasn't worried about where I was positioned on the ledge. All I was focused on was staring at that screen and pointing that transducer at the fish. This basically took away all of the natural 
abilities and skills I developed over 10 years of offshore fishing and wiped them away. And all I was doing was focusing on that screen, which really hurt me for the first couple hours using this unit. Fortunately, I kind of understood that this was happening after, well, I was sucking for like two hours, and I started using the live scope in a different way. Instead of trying to pinpoint my cast on a specific fish, I was trying to use the live scope to one, determine the fish's position on the drop or on this offshore ledge I was fishing, determine my boat positioning, and determining my cast, where I should be putting the bait. Once I started changing my mentality this way, I realized that I was able to actually catch a lot of fish off this spot. Basically what I would do is set my boat about 50 feet away from the drop, getting a little bit further away so I wasn't spooking the fish. I would then determine where the fish were positioned, whether they were up on top of the drop or off the end of the drop. First off, what I found is that I could catch a lot of fish that were positioned on top of the drop easily with a drop shot. This is very common whenever you're fishing offshore, even when I'm using my old 2D and down imaging transducers, I found that whenever fish are positioned on top of the drops, you can catch them very easily on bottom baits like a jig, a drop shot, Carolina rig, stuff like that. And for a while, I was catching 10, 15 fish an hour with that drop shot. Unfortunately, most of those fish were really small. I was catching a lot of like 12 inches, six inches, like tiny fish, despite seeing a ton of fish on the graph. What this really clued me into is that the fish that were up on top of the drop I was seeing on the live scope were small fish. They were those you know, less than two pound bass. But if we looked at this live scope image, you can see that there are actually a lot of bass that are positioned off the drop, just off the lip of the drop suspended over deeper water. If you look at the returns on these fish on the live scope, they look a lot brighter, a lot stronger than the small dots that are up on top of the ledge. This clued me in to think that those fish might be a little bit bigger. As a result, I started changing up my approach to fishing this offshore ledge. Instead of trying to fish for those fish on top of the drop, I started trying to fish for some suspended bass with a big magnum flutter spoon. And we'll see what happens. Got him. Oh my gosh. Got him on the magnum flutter spoon, baby. Oh my gosh, it's a big one. Changed it up, went away from the small stuff and went to something really big that I felt like these fish hadn't seen yet because I saw so many fish down there. I felt like if I could find something they hadn't seen yet, I could get one of these fish to trigger. And oh my gosh, it's an absolute tank. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, stay on there, fish. Oh, <laughs> yes, baby. Jenko fishing magnum flutter spoon. That fish was just barely hooked. That is a big eight inch spoon. That is a big, big bass. Oh my gosh, look at that thing right there, guys. Oh, yes. Throwing the shaky head, throwing the drop shot. Who needs that stuff when you got that big flutter spoon, big bass? Man, that live scope. Once you figure out how the fish are positioning, you can get them in the boat. Yes. Six pounds, four ounces. That is a tank right there. Nice, nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. Changing up with something unique on these ledge fish and putting some tanks in the boat. After catching that really big bass in the Magnum Flutter Spoon, I realized that the bigger fish were suspended off the drop right on the lip of that ledge. You could see them on the live scope very easily, and even more cool, I could pinpoint my cast to the edge of that drop. That's something that's a little bit tricky to do when you don't have this forward-facing sonar. You don't know exactly where that drop is all the time when you are just looking at your Navionics mapping and 2D sonar, but with this, Live scope, you can see exactly where that drop off is, how far in front of it, it of you it is, and I could really target the lip of that ledge with my baits. I threw the Magnum Flare Spoon for a little longer and didn't get any bites, but then I switched over to a Jenko Fishing Tremor Shad, seven inches long because they're a really big gizzard shad on the spot, and I was throwing it on an ounce in the corner tremor shad head by Jenko. And this is basically just a swim bait on a scrounger head. 
And what I was trying to do was cast this tremor shad right down the edge of that drop off, basically paralleling the lip of that ledge. If we use a graphic here, you can see that here's the lip of this ledge. I was using the live scope to find the edge of that drop, then cast my bait basically almost parallel with that drop, maybe at like a 70 degree angle, casting up on top of the ledge and then working it straight down that drop. This is where all those big fish were positioning and I could actually reel that bait right down that edge very easily because I could pinpoint my cast with the live scope. This resulted in a really quick fish catch and well, a few more after that. Here go. Oh my gosh, I was about to go try to turn on the active captain. Oh my gosh, to record the sonar. That freaking tank ate my swim bait. Oh my gosh. Same spot. Saw that school down there and fired over to it. I wanted to turn on the recording live scope big one ate it here we go oh my gosh oh there we go nice one right there Oh man, I was throwing that drop shot a lot for today. I was trying to, and I was getting a lot of little guys, and I was thinking about what I could throw to get some of these bigger fish to commit, and finally switch over to a seven inch Jenko fishing tremor shad on a scrounger head, and was just almost dragging the thing on the bottom, and that guy choked it. There's all that big gizzard shad. Usually I can't get away by with throwing these big, seven inch baits or those magnum flutter spoons but there's like 10 inch gizzard shad in this lake that means that these big bass are feeding on that bigger profile bait and so they're kind of passing up the little drop shots and stuff which is why i'm getting a lot of little bites on the drop shots and i'm switching up between some of these bigger bulkier baits to get bigger fish in the boat so i'm talking about guys four pounds two ounces four pounder to add to a six pounder that is not too bad right there nice fish on that scrounger head Here's the bait I'm fishing again. It's the Jenko Fishing 7 inch Tremor Shad on an ounce and a quarter scrounger head. I like that ounce and a quarter size. I'm trying to cover water because I can literally just cast it out, let it sink down the bottom, and then crank it in, wind it in pretty quickly. It seems to get me some good bites. That fish actually bit it as I was going for the camera, and as it stopped, that's when that fish ate it. So I might need to vary up my retrieve a little bit, make it a little more erratic. That might be the deal to get these fish in the boat. And if you take a look right here, you can see that you can somewhat see this ledge as I scan side to side the brighter yellow section is the top of that ledge or amber color section and then out where you see all of those dots those are the fish that are suspended off the drop and I can kind of scan around with the front of my trolling mode to determine what direction that ledge is in and right there I can see that it's directly ahead of the boat so I can fire out that scrounger and I know that I'm going to be putting my bait right on the edge of that drop and I can scan right and left just to see where the drop starts and ends. I can see that as I go more to the left over here, it drops off sharp and I have all deep water. And as I move over to the left, that ledge runs right there. So I'm basically able to cast that bait right on top of that ledge, reel it directly in the strike zone the entire cast. And that is going to definitely help me become a lot more efficient offshore this summer. Got him. Another big one, keeping that bait erratic. Drop the buoy right here. Big one right here. Yep. Oh, figured it out guys. Had to change up baits to get these bigger fish to bite. Now that I have, oh man, this is a big one. They're choking that thing. There we go. Oh yes, that's a big one right there. There are multiple fish that bit that bait too. As I was working it, there's a school down there that I got fired up, finally found the bait. Like I talked about in one of my recent videos, you gotta rotate baits a lot offshore nowadays to get these fish in the boat. I don't think a lot of guys are throwing that big scrounger head. It's producing fish. Four and three quarter pounder right there. Four pounds, 12 ounces. That is what I am talking about, guys. Really nice fish, healthy fish. Look at that. They're chewing on those big gizzards. That was the deal. Finding the right bait, now it's going down. Got him. Big one. Off that drop again. This is a real big one. Oh my gosh. 
don't know what I got here. we go <gasps> okay i think we can finally conclude that live scope is helpful it's helping me put these fish in the boat right now i can get that cast perfectly work that swim bait down that drop this is crazy i actually struggle to catch fish on this bait normally i feel like just because i'm not putting it around the fish in the right way and i've actually figured out now the right to retrieve to get these fish to trigger just because of how i'm seeing them positioned on the live scope which is just really really cool that's a big fish it's real skinny so it's not gonna weigh much love to see it in the winter but man that's a beautiful fish four pounds 14 ounces that's what i'm talking about right there really really nice fish beautiful long and skinny but that is a brute right there that's what i'm talking about oh man there we go another tank that is four right there really nice fish and man that is a beautiful beautiful bait right there all torn up oh my gosh i can't believe i haven't been throwing this thing more over the years i've been struggling actually like i said to get fish to commit to this bait and i've always just worked it on kind of a straight retrieve i've got a few fish kind of burning it and popping it but i didn't really I think maximize the effectiveness of this bait because I wasn't varying my retrieve and working it on these ledges, popping it off the ledge. I don't think that a single one of these fish has been up on top of the ledge. I think all of them have got it as it's popped free over the edge of that ledge. And again, I'm able to keep my boat position perfectly to know when that bait is going to come to the ledge. And I know basically the distance from the ledge I am. I can speed it up, burn it, pop it. And it's so cool because it's kind of like fishing a lay down up on the bank where you know when you're about to get to the log you can kind of stop it and burn it and twitch it and I know Randy's been talking about that a lot in shallow square bill videos and now I'm able to do that exact same thing but with my offshore baits because of the live scope. Here's our retrieve the scrounger head. I just cast it out and let it sink to the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my rod once when I start my retrieve and then slowly start winding that thing in. I want it to stay pretty close to the bottom maybe only a foot or two off the bottom and let that head vibrate. And then every once in a while, I might burn that bait and stop it and let it fall back down the bottom. And then maybe on the next time when I let it get back down the bottom, I'll do that slow retrieve for another five, six seconds. And then I might hop it up off the bottom and let it fall back down. Basically, all I'm trying to do, though, is imitate some sort of fleeing or escaping gizzard shad that's down there. It seems like these bass want a bait that's fleeing or moving quickly like that flare spoon or like this erratic action on the scrounger head. They don't want just a steady retrieve. And when fish are really pressured, that's very common. So make sure you're varying up your retrieve, changing from burning it, stopping it, letting it fall, things like that. The more erratic you make it a lot of times, the better the bite's gonna be. To reiterate that point, what I was doing with the scrounger head on this offshore ledge is fishing it almost like I would with a square bill on a shallow laydown. As Randy's talked about in our past videos, when he fishes laydown logs, he'll cast up to a laydown. Once it gets close to that laydown, he'll kind of pause it and stop it, burn it, stop it, and really deflect it against that tree and give it an erratic motion when it's in the strike zone where he knows the fish are. This generates a lot of extra bites for him. And I could do the exact same thing with the scrounger head because I knew where that ledge was. I knew where those fish were positioned with the live scope and I could set up my cast perfectly. Now I wasn't seeing the bait itself on the live scope. I never was actually able to track this bait very well with the live scope down there. But because I knew how far away the spot was, I could gauge when I needed to start making that erratic retrieve and it generated three really good bites in quick succession. I don't think I would have caught these fish without the live scope honestly because I don't think that I would have been able to pinpoint that cast as efficiently. I may have been able to catch maybe one or two, but it definitely put a few extra fish in the boat. What this means is that this live scope isn't necessarily the cure-all where you're going to cast the bait out, watch them swim or to it, and watch them eat it, and follow your bait around the entire cast. Instead, what I use it for today was to better understand bass behavior and their positioning on structure. This is really key because when I am graphing offshore structure with my traditional 2D sonar uh, side imaging and down imaging, I can determine the bass's position in a single moment. I can see, okay, are they suspended off a drop or up on top of the drop? Where are they? And I can make my decision of where to cast what to throw based on that. But the ability to see how those fish are acting in real time 
makes it so much easier to react to what the fish are doing, adjust your presentations, your casting angles, your approach, because you know exactly how those fish are behaving, how they're moving, where the bait fish are, etc. This means that to fully take advantage of this live scope, you do need to have a solid understanding of how fish position on structure, why they're on the species structure, and really, I feel like you need to also understand how to use your side imaging and down imaging really well before you even bother using the live scope. What I found is that it's very difficult to just pull up on the spot and see the fish up on an area by scanning around if you don't know what you're looking for. Those fish could be catfish or crappie or whatever. And if you just try to pull up on the spot, drop your trolling motor and scan around with your live scope, it's going to be very inefficient and you're not going to find fish very quickly doing it or at all, you might just be picking up the wrong species. Instead, you need to have a very strong grasp of how to use your traditional 2D sonar, side imaging and down imaging first, to identify what bass are, where they're positioning, and where they are. Once you find the bass, you've located with your traditional sonars, then you can take your live scope to pinpoint your cast and get that real-time feedback to dial in your presentations. Therefore, this live scope is not the cure-all. It's not going to make it so that you're always going to catch fish when you're on the lake. Instead, if you already go with your electronics and you already understand how bass behave offshore, it's going to give you additional information and additional insight on bass behavior which will help you catch more fish. That's just my opinion though, and if you want to get the Garmin Live Scope, then definitely go do it. And if you do understand your units and you have the extra money to spend, especially if you're a tournament angler, this is a must have because it will help you put extra keepers in the boat at the end of a fishing day. If you are interested in trying to get some of these units installed and want to get them installed properly, I would highly recommend going to thebasstank.com. I'm working with the Bass Tank for all of my boat installation needs. They're switching out graphs for me all the time, getting my battery set up. I mean, these guys are awesome. They know how to set up the proper wiring so your graphs don't get fried, to make sure you have enough power supply to run all your graphs, make sure the transducers are mounted properly so you're getting the best image. There's so many little details that go into it, and I would say that 90% of the time when people are not getting a good image out of the graph, it's an installation error for one reason or another. So if you do want to get new graphs on your boat and want to upgrade, I would recommend going to the Bass Tank, checking them out. They do great installation recommendations and we're working on a lot of cool projects as well like settings guides for all these fish finders I'm using and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, I'll be talking about that more in future videos, but I just wanted to kind of give you my first impressions here. They might change over time. I don't know what my opinion is going to be in six months or three weeks or whatever, but I will definitely make an updated video after having the live scope on the boat for let's say two, three months to give you my second impression. Other right, than that, thanks for checking out the view guys. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. I will be coming out with more videos about settings and how to use live scope, how to interpret all that stuff in the near future. So if you were here for that, don't worry, more videos coming like that as well. So anyways, thanks again for checking out the video and I'll see y'all next one.